All right, so move on to the next segment. Uh, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the 2023 NFL awards that were given out on Thursday night. I will be sharing my thoughts on each player and each coach that were given their respective rewards in the 2023 NFL season. So starting off with the MVP award, we saw Patrick Mahomes win his second MVP in his respective career, uh, definitely adding another accolade onto his impressive career thus far. Uh, well deserved for Patrick Mahomes to win his second MVP this season. He was no doubt the best quarterback in the National Football League this year. Uh, led the league in passing yards. He had 5,250 passing yards. Led the league in passing touchdowns. He had 41 passing touchdowns. He had 12 interceptions. Had the best QBR amongst starting quarterbacks this season with a QBR of 77.5. Uh, to me, it was a strong two-man race of who was going to win the MVP award this season between Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. I think what really marked it out uh, for the voters uh, was Jalen Hurts missing the uh, the last couple games in the regular season when he missed that game against the Dallas Cowboys and was, missed that game against the New Orleans Saints. Patrick Mahomes did not miss any games this NFL season, and I do believe that is the reason why voters went with Patrick Mahomes. But if it were up to me, the way I Patrick Mahomes balled out and played this season, especially uh, Kansas City being at the top of the mountain in the AFC, I do believe that I would have given the vote to Patrick Mahomes, even if Jalen Hurst didn't miss those two games towards the end of the season. So Patrick Mahomes, to me, definitely deserved this one. Definitely the best quarterback in the National Football League this year. Then we move on to the Offensive Player of the Year. That award was won by wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings, Justin Jefferson, a.k.a. Jettis. Uh, this was a well-deserved award. Uh, definitely was an offensive machine this season. Justin Jefferson put together his best career and his, uh, best, put together his best season in his respective career so far. Uh, was that, no doubt the best wide receiver in the National Football League this season. Uh, will definitely be getting a huge contract from the Minnesota Vikings in the forsake of the future. Uh, had 128 catches, had 1,809 receiving yards, and eight touchdowns. If you don't give him, if he's not your vote to win Offensive Player of the Year, I don't know who is. But definitely Justin Jefferson had an amazing year. We move on to Defensive Player of the Year. That was won by San Francisco 49er Defensive Player Nick Bosa. Now, this was a well-deserved achievement. Uh, I really would have liked that my guy, Michael Parsons, won the award, but Nick Bosa was just playing on a different level this season compared to any pass rusher. Uh, Well-deserved. He had an uh, overall 90.9 .9 overall grade by Pro Football Focus this season. Uh, was a nightmare on the defensive line this season and was by far the best pass rusher in the National Football League, totaling up with 19 sacks in the NFL. That was first or overall sacks in this season. Well-deserved for Nick Bosa. Then we move on to Coach of the Year, which was won by New York Giants head coach Brian Dable. Uh, this was also a well-deserved award for Brian Dable to win this award. Uh, arguments can be made for the coaching jobs that Nick Sirianni, head coach for the Philadelphia Eagles, and head coach for the San Francisco 49ers, Kyle Shanahan, what they did respectively this year coaching-wise. Nick Sirianni brought the best out of that Philadelphia Eagles team. As much as I dislike him as a head coach, as much as I think he's really cocky, he did a really good job coaching up that Eagles team. Meanwhile, Kyle Shanahan did his thing. You could say, well, he was supposed to do that with the San Francisco 49ers roster. He went from... Having Trey Lance as a starting quarterback, it went down. Jimmy Garoppolo, next man up, second string technically on the uh, for the depth chart this year. He went down. Made Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy look like a million bucks, helping him win two playoff games and make it, helping him get to the NFC Championship game. And they lost a total of four quarterbacks this season. So Kyle Shanahan did a tremendous job coaching up the San Francisco 49ers this year. But I think the job that Brian Dable did for the New York Giants was unprecedented, uh, couldn't be matched or duplicated. I do believe that he was well-deserved of winning this award. Uh, he coached up a roster that had no business being a 500 or more uh, football team this season, let alone being in the playoffs, let alone winning a playoff game this season. So the coaching that Brian Dable brought to the New York Giants this year was tremendous, remarkable. And he completely fixed Danny Dimes, who was a turnover machine early in his career with the interceptions and the fumbles early in his career. 
And I do believe that Brian Dable has built a great foundation for the New York Giants moving forward. I expect them to be contenders for a very long time in the NFC East and in the NFC Conference as well. Well deserved by Brian Dable. Uh, <clears throat> which moves me on to Offensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, we saw a wide receiver for the New York Jets, Garrett Wilson, won this award. Uh, respectfully, I don't think that Garrett Wilson should have won this award. I do believe that Offensive Rookie of the Year should have went to uh, Seahawks running back in Kenneth Walker the uh, third. I believe that he should have been the one to win this award this season. Uh, he was the better offensive rookie to me, uh, led all rookie running backs in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns this season. So to me, that uh, is a huge exclamation point of he should have won Offensive Rookie of the Year. Even though Garrett Wilson and Kenneth Walker the third played two different positions, Garrett Wilson, of course, playing receiver, Kenneth Walker playing running back, uh, Kenneth Walker did score more touchdowns than Garrett Wilson. I believe that that should have went to the young rookie uh, running back in Seattle. Uh, so then we move on to Defensive Rookie of the Year, which we saw Sauce Gardner, cornerback uh, for the New York Jets, win this award. Uh, another well-deserved award. Uh, was arguably the best cornerback in the National Football League this year. There's an argument for there between who was the best corner between him and Patrick Sertain this season. Um, Sauce Gardner actually only allowed 54 yards in man coverage this season in 18 ball games for the New York Jets this year. So he was holding his own in man coverage as a rookie. And that's something the New York Jets have been dying for since they uh, last had their lockdown corner in Darrell Revis. Uh, Sauce Gardner was only allowing 3.17 yards per game in man coverage. That is tremendous for a rookie. Uh, a star was born this year in the Big Apple in a New York Jets uniform in Sauce Gardner. And I could see him becoming a generational talent at the cornerback position. I see him being the next lock, uh, lockdown guy at the cornerback position in Darrell Revis. We, the NFL lacks a lot of lockdown guys. Uh, really, right now, the only two lockdown guys I could think of off the top of my head is Patrick Sertain and uh, Sauce Gardner. There's, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good cornerbacks in the league, but these are the only two guys that I could think of that are true lockdown guys. J.C. Horn's in the conversation as well, but definitely well-deserved for this guy and Sauce Gardner. Uh, comeback Player of the Year, we saw quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks, Geno Smith, win this award. Uh, Well-deserved. Uh, honorable mentions, though, for this award is Saquon Barkley and Christian McCaffrey. Both running backs, both respective players have had a hard time staying on the field healthy for a whole entire season. They both did that this year. Uh, great job by both players. Had tremendous uh, outings and tremendous impacts for the San Francisco 49ers and the New York Giants this year. So they're honorable mentions. Um, but Geno Smith was one of, if not the biggest surprise in the NFL this season. The world did not see this coming of what Geno Smith was going to do. After the Seattle Seahawks traded away Russell Wilson, it was it was a surefire uh, rebuild that was going to take place in Seattle. But that was not the case. Geno Smith rose to the occasion, had the best career of his season. I mean, best season of his career. And he helped the Seattle Seahawks to the playoffs. He had 4,282 passing yards, 30 passing touchdowns, and was selected to his first Pro Bowl game. Definitely well-deserved uh, for Geno Smith. Definitely looking to see what's to come for him as a new franchise guy in Seattle. <clears throat> and then we move on to the Walter Payton, Man, uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, which was awarded to Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott. Uh, this was a well-deserved award. Dak Prescott is an amazing human being. I love the type of human being that he truly is. Definitely a great bright spot on planet Earth. Dak Prescott is an amazing human being. He's a locker room leader. He's a great community leader in Dallas and has his own charitable uh, vendors, vendors called Faith Fight Finish and stands up for anxiety and depression. So Dak Prescott is definitely a truly amazing human being on planet Earth. Uh, you might not like him because he's the franchise guy of the Dallas Cowboys, but Dak Prescott has a big heart and he truly cares for others. And that's what he's done all year long, uh, especially for the community of Dallas. You should, If you don't like him as a football player, that's your own opinion. That's why we're, I created this podcast to have your own sports opinion. But he truly deserves to get the respect that he deserves as a human being. But that's my thoughts on the 2023 
NFL awards this season.